Breakfast with Cobb Colvin. Trickstar Radio. Just gone uh, 20 to 9 here. Trickstar Radio. It's been a really enjoyable show so far. Um, we've got Square Wave and Sook Knight in the building. Uh, thank you again for making the trip down. It's been a really enjoyable uh, conversation so far to hear um, all the stuff. And listen through that one in full because that's a tune. Obviously, it's, uh, it's a journey, that tune. I feel yeah. more than anything else. Um, so we're going to be looking next... Um, more specifically at kind of like 140 the kind of like almost like the sort of like homeland shall we say for sort of dubstep and grime at the minute in what has become a bit of a fusion genre um, in my opinion over the years obviously you're, you're someone who stayed very kind of like up to date with the sort of uh, the sort of stylist the styles of the different genres and you've got a sort of style which does seem to like fit into so many boxes um, how why do you why do you think stuff is sort of like fusing at the minute it's quite a big question I know but I'd quite like to get your opinion on it that's a tough question man it's the, I, don't, I think it's always been been kind of fusing though well my sound i feel my sound's always been kind of in the middle because i yeah I, I don't know how and why it's just naturally happened but um yeah i think a lot of grime production has technically got a lot better whereas dubstep was always a bit more technical than grime i reckon yeah and a lot of the like i think yeah i think because it's becoming more technical and mix downs are getting a lot better it's, it's all coming a bit a bit similar it's on. becoming a bit similar I'm, I'm finding a lot of the time as well with the sort of um, something I'm noticing a lot um, in in dubstep specifically at the minute and in grime as well but more dubstep sp- uh, specifically is kind of like eastern inspired strings and stuff like that and obviously that's something you've been doing since the since the, the beginning is those sort of eastern style string sounds but I'm noticing a lot more in almost like the deep medi kind of sound there's a lot more kind of uh, sort of like like cellos and stuff like that but more with sort of like eastern scales going through them um it's just quite cool to see the fusion like um when you like were first making your sound obviously you burst onto the scene with something which was very kind of unique at the time um like walk me through some of your what you feel are your biggest kind of releases over the years so i mean my first my first big one i think was born invincible which was in 2008 and that got that got battered by a lot of the big dubstep DJs and then P Money did the vocal of it which was left the room yeah and then that blew up on in the grime scene as well yeah so that, and P Money brought that kind of because that his first mixtape was a lot of dubstep I mean he was vocaling a lot of dubstep and then that kind of brought it to the grime scene and then yeah it's like yeah I think that was one of my first big ones and then I had Diesel Not Petrol around the same time which was again getting played in both grime and yeah. dubstep scenes. Yeah, this is this is what this is the, what I'm trying to get to though. This is because obviously you're someone who has sat in between the two things. Yeah. Um, if you could like stylistically lean either way, where would you go? It's that's that's a big question. That is, but <laughs> I've like see, I like being in the middle. Yeah, like I can go both ways. You know what I mean? I like like. I'm known over there and I'm known over here as well. It's nice. It is, it's, it's a cool position to be in, man, obviously. And you're, you're, you've sort of been in a position where you've been able to kind of kick up your own label um, sort of scenario as well. Like, what, uh, Talk me through it. What's the label called? The uh, label's called Daku, which means, like, in Punjabi, it means outlaw, which was, like, yeah, back in school days, everyone, we, like, all our Indian mates, we used to call each other Daku, and it's, like, just kind of just used it as a name. But, yeah, so this, uh, because I've, I've had... So so I've got so much music that I'm sitting on and it just and I couldn't just all put it out on New World Audio and I just couldn't just give it away to all our like, other labels so it just made sense for me to just put it out myself definitely like, man I, I, th- I think it's quite cool obviously it's uh would, would you say it's your like first priority or is it more sort of like an imprint you have at your dis- not disposal but an imprint you have available if you need to put something yeah out? kind of it's, it's, it's a way for me to be consistent with my releases because that's what one thing I was missing out was like I'd have a release and then I'd have a gap where I was waiting on other labels to uh, like just waiting on other labels basically they'll be like oh we can put this out in like next year or something and I'm like oh I want to put it out within like, the next sort of yeah, month two months then, sort of then things, I'm yeah. like miss, I've got a whole gap in between releases so it's a way it's a way for me to be consistent and keep giving my fans music definitely man I mean I mean, something else obviously we've noticed over time is you're someone who does like to work with vocalists um, you do always every cut every sort of every now and then we'll see you pop up with like a really big kind of vocal tune um, the next tune we're going to play is actually a remix of a Ruby Black tune yeah. um, which is entitled Medicine Woman like talk me through this one how did this one come together um, so her manager just hit me up one day because I've known her manager for a while um, they, she just hit me up said I've got this new vocalist um, that she's working with and they sent I said okay yeah just send the vocal over I'll have a listen I really like the vocal and I was like yeah I've got, like, I had an idea straight away for it as soon as I heard the vocal and yeah I've pretty much done the remix in like a couple of hours wow 
Yeah. But when, when you're producing stuff, though, do you find... Um, with your sort of sound, do you find it something that you can kind of work on quite quickly, or is it some, or are you someone who will sit there for like hours and hours and hours, kind of like working on the same sort of Usually thing? Usually, if I've got an idea in my head, I can bang it out in like a couple of hours, get the whole tune down, and then I'll probably spend like a week or so just mixing it down. Yeah. But the main on on the te- on the technical side, of yeah. Things, but, but the main tune, I think, if I've got the idea there, I can bang it out like a couple of hours. That's cool to hear, man. I mean, obviously, on this show, we get a lot of like different types of producers on, and some people I'll talk to, and they'll be they'll be talking about, yeah, I spent about like three months on this on this one tune, and then about a month on the mix down afterwards, <laughs> and I'm just there like, this, this just sounds stressful more than anything else. Um, well, three but, months on one snare. Yeah. <laughs> More, you know, it's always the snare as well. It's always the snare that people <laughs> want to talk about afterwards as well. It's been so long on this snare. Um, yeah, we're going to jump into this one in just a second. But um, just before that as well, like, it's, do you like working with vocalists? Yeah, I love it. I, I just, yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a different vibe altogether, isn't it? Different kind of beats you can make. You don't have to fill out the beat so much because, you know, the vocalist is going to just... There's like a, there's an area of the instrumental yeah. that they, they can kind of take yeah. hold of. Um, what have been your sort of favourite ones to do over the years? Because obviously you've, you've been on quite a few like pretty substantial production credits. Um, so, well, I've done a track on Ed Sheeran's album, on his first album, which was Grade 8. Um, that was like, yeah, that was a whole different kind of beat to make because it was like kind of a poppy kind of yeah. thing. But um, yeah, apart from that, I've done... Footsie, I've done Work All Day for Footsie, which was a big tune. Um, yeah, all the stuff, people, well, slang like this, that yeah, done with P Money, that was huge. Yeah, man. Which was cool. almost to an extent the first of its kind, in, in a kind of yeah, kind it of was, way. Yeah, it was kind of the first dubstep vocal tune to get kind of playlisted on, on BBC Radio 1 and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's, again, it's quite a substantial tune. I mean, it's, it's always, I like, I like talking through this stuff because obviously I was quite young when all this was happening. Yeah. I, was, I was, I think I was like sort of 16, 17 yeah. this, sort of, this sort of time there. So I was very much like checking um, vinyl shops every single day to see if new stuff had dropped and stuff like that. So it's exciting, it's, it's exciting to talk through it for me. You can probably tell I'm beaming away over on yeah. this side of the desk. <laughs> um, let's jump into this one then. This one is the Sook Knight remix of Medicine Woman, Ruby Black on the original don't go anywhere. Waking up Brighton. Breakfast with Cobb Colvin.